Hello and welcome to this video. My name's Barry Beckham. Well, you can see by the title on screen, I'm going to take a look at what's new in Pictures to XE10. We're not going to cover everything, but just some of the highlights. One of the more important changes is that with the launch of Pictures to XE10, it's now a 64-bit program, which means it's going to work smoother and faster, particularly with large projects. But let's take a look into the main screen of Pictures to XE10. One of the most obvious changes we can see here is the dark screen mode. Now I've been quite a fan of this ever since Photoshop moved to a dark screen mode a few years ago. I think it just projects our images far better. But don't worry if you would prefer to have the old lighter screen, we can switch to that pretty easily. If you go to your settings at the top left of the screen, we need to go to the preferences at the bottom of that panel, and we need to go to the main tab at the top left, and there you can see we can switch from dark to light. We're going to have to reboot the program if we change from dark to light, but I'm sure that's not going to be any problem. And once you switch back to light, of course it will remain set to that until you decide to change it. I'm quite happy with the dark mode, so I'm going to live with that. Some of the changes within Pictures to XE10 are not something we can see easily. For example, we now have hardware acceleration, which is used for video encoding for NVIDIA, AMD and Intel video cards, and that can make things work three to five times faster. We also have hardware acceleration for the slide list. The slide list is the row of thumbnails you can see down the bottom. Also the file list, that's the area I call my holding area where I'm selecting content from. And also the timeline and we'll need to switch to that by going down to the bottom right. So all of these now have hardware acceleration for faster and smoother work. Motion Blur is a new feature that's available for video output. It takes a little bit of explaining what exactly Motion Blur does. Imagine holding your hand up in front of your face rather like the graphic that I've just put up on the screen. If we spread our fingers as you can see here and we wave our hand up and down our fingers are going to appear blurred. Now with fast moving animation we can now simulate this motion blur which makes our animations much sweeter on the eye. I think I may be able to demonstrate this to you with a video I shot just a day or so ago. Let's take a look at that. What I'd like to do here is to show you an 8 second video clip. It's a runner who's running towards us and then to our left. So when we see the runner passing out of the frame on our left, the runner is moving much faster in relation to us than he is when he's coming towards us. That's when we notice the motion blur. So let's give this video a try. I'll double click and you'll see a nice sharp shot as he comes around the bend, but definitely blurred as he leaves the frame. That is motion blur. If I could have captured him pin sharp by using a much faster shutter speed, it would actually be detrimental to the video. It wouldn't be quite so nice on the eye. So coming back into Pictures to XE, we may ask what relevance does that have here? Well, whenever we create any fast moving animation, we can now recreate motion blur. Let me show you how we do it. Now we don't have to worry while we're putting the slideshow together. It's when we come to publish the HD video is when we can set up the motion blur. So right up at the top right we have publish show. The option I want to select is the HD and 4K video. And there we can see the option to apply motion blur. By default it's generally set to motion blur disabled 
So if you had very fast animation, you may want to select strong motion blur. But I think on most occasions, I will settle for normal and see just how it works. Now, one of the things you may notice here is the 60p default setting up at the top right here. The 60p mode is now set by default whenever we publish our video presentation. Now we're talking here about 60 frames per second, an MP4 video, and that is now my publish option of choice. I choose that because it gives me very smooth playback of the transitions and the animations in my show. A 60p MP4 video is also great for PC, Mac, televisions and of course uploading to YouTube and other social media. One of the other really good improvements with Pictures to XE10 is how it handles the video we wish to introduce into our slideshow. If I scroll up my file list here, you can see I've got one or two videos here. If we were dragging one of these videos down into Pictures to XE8 or Pictures to XE9, we'd be invited to optimize the video. If we didn't do that, the video would probably not play that smoothly within our sequence. That's not the case anymore. The videos you can see here were shot with a Mavic Pro drone. They're actually 4K videos, so they're rather large. They've been edited, but only for color and contrast, not for size. Now when I drag down one of these videos for use and drop it into the timeline, what you'll notice straight away is we're not asked to optimize it, and if I were to press play, we can see the video running in the media player just above the slide list. Now if you've used video in Pictures to XE before you may have noticed that you had the ability to trim the video clips and make them smaller. You still have that opportunity. If I were to go back to my file list here, select a video, I can right click and there we can see we have the opportunity to convert or trim a video clip. Now remembering that the video I selected is 4K, there you can see the pixel count and I could go to the drop down list here and reduce the size considerably or I've got a custom option too. I can change the quality with the options here but I can also click to trim the video and we get the option to do that from the front and or the back. With the spinning round of the screen I've opened up Pictures to XE10 into the timeline and we can see that I've also added a piece of music. Now one of the major changes within Pictures to XE10 is our ability to see the WAV file which is what we're viewing here but also be able to view that inside the objects and animation screen and this is going to help us when we want to time our animation much easier with the music or soundtrack. So with the image I've called broken glass selected I'm going to open up my objects and animation screen. Now we're not viewing the WAV file just yet we need to go down to the tools button at the bottom right select it and right down the bottom you can see when I hover over the one that says waveforms I can choose to show the waveform. There we can see the music as it will play throughout this objects and animation screen between the time this image begins to appear on screen to when it leaves the screen. And there we can see the peaks of the music here and that's going to help us line up our keyframes when we come to animate our images. I'm going to add one or two keyframes just to give you a flavor of how this may work. So I'm going to hold my Alt and Insert a few times. And I'll just click and move these down and away. But you can see how easy it would be if I was trying to line up animation here. I can line up my keyframes with the peaks of the music. 
If I want to make the WAV file slightly wider so I can see it more clearly, I can go back to the tools and once I've got the waveform shown, I can change the size. Let's choose a midway point. Let's go to 250%. You can see the difference. Now we can see the peaks a lot more clearly. Let me put my cursor down at this point and I'll just give you a little blast of what that music sounds like. You can see how easy it would be to line up any keyframes with the peaks, highs and lows of any music or soundtrack we wish to use. One thing to bear in mind though, something that caught me out just a couple of days ago. Let me just move that broken glass up. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to make a copy of this, Control C, Control V and Control V again. Sometimes we can be working with a number of different versions of the same image or even three different images. We can hold the shift key and select the top and the bottom so we can see all of the keyframes for the three images we're working on. But this line here above the track waveform is movable. So just be careful in case you get to a point like that where you cannot see the keyframes of the other two images. Just be aware that that is movable and you just need to move it down. If I can get a hold of it, move it down, get it out of your way so you can see and get to all of the keyframes necessary. This is going to be a huge improvement. Now with the spinning round of the screen you can see I've changed things very slightly. The two copies that I made of this image, broken glass, have been removed over on the right hand side here. And I've applied just one or two keyframes and lined them up with the peaks of the music just to give you an idea of what we're talking about with relation to the WAV file being visible in the objects and animations screen. So let me just press play and you'll see exactly what I mean. I've just made some simple changes here. But very easy to line them up to the peaks of the music when we can actually see the peaks of the music. And one last thing before we leave this particular improvement, we can turn it off from here too. Click and the WAV file is gone. And we can bring it back in the same way. With the spinning round of the screen once again, you can see that I've brought you into the main screen of Pictures to XE and we're looking at the slide list here. What I'd like to do is demonstrate how we can now separate the soundtrack from a movie. I've got a movie up here which I showed a little bit earlier on. I'm going to click and drag that down into the slide list. But to be able to make the change I wish to demonstrate, we need to open up the timeline. So I'm going to do that by going to the bottom right of the screen. There you can see the video, but we cannot see the WAV file just yet. Now this is rather a short piece of video for this demonstration, but nevertheless I think it's adequate. I'm going to select that piece of video, right click, and choose to separate the audio from the video. And there you see the audio pop out. Now this is going to be an important change. We've always had the ability to do something like I'm about to demonstrate, but we've had to use a workaround. Now we can do it as simple as I've just demonstrated. Sometimes the sound of some videos that we wish to use, we may not want the sound at all. Other times the ambient sound or maybe the sound of waves or the footsteps of a runner are quite important to the story we're trying to tell. But what we don't want to happen is the sound to start very abruptly at the point when this video starts to play, which is what's going to happen here. In this instance, we would need to make changes to the sound file, fading the sound in and out. 
To do that, we need to add audio key points, and we do that simply by just clicking the orange line here. There's the first one, second one, third one, and fourth one. So here I have the ability to drag this down, so we're fading the sound in, and we're fading the sound out. Now that's going to be an important change and gives us the ability to make our soundtrack sound much more professional. But there's something else I think that's going to help us too. Let me just go back to that sound file we've split from the video, right click, and I'm going to clear the audio key points. Now just imagine that the piece of video that we wish to play here was maybe the sound of a river a fast-flowing river or maybe even a beach with crashing waves. Quite often we really need to have the sound fading in much sooner than the sound that we currently have with a video. We could actually do with more sound than video. Well now we can achieve that quickly and easily. All I have to do here is right click my audio here and duplicate the audio clip. Now you can see if I go down here a little bit, we've got it shown just beneath, so I'll just stretch up so you can see it. So it wouldn't be impossible, would it, if this was the sound of waves crashing on a beach, to do something like this. So we can have the sound nicely crossed over there, but maybe we can have it fading in over a much longer distance and fading out over a much longer distance too. Now when you look at a WAV file like this that I've just duplicated and you could see that the sound is going to start to be heard when the video it's relating to is nowhere to be seen. In other words if this was crashing waves we'd start to hear the waves over the image that's just in front of it and we will still be hearing the sound of the waves or the sound of the video when the image afterwards was coming onto the screen. Now you may think by looking at the waveform that that's not correct but when we actually see it and hear it we'll find it works remarkably well and of course we've got the opportunity via these key points to drag down the volume of the sound of our video so we've got all the control we need.